But after factoring in 2024's performance on the pitch and transfer activity off of it, Chelsea still need to bring in over a million in revenues or player sales. And it needs to happen before the end of June to meet profit and sustainability rules. It's a shame, it's a shame. The Premier League and EFL transfer window opens on the 14th of June. Which teams are already scrambling in the market? Specifically, why are some teams desperate to sell before the end of June? The reason? The Premier League's strict profit and sustainability rules, PSR, which restricts the financial losses a team can make. Whilst the maximum losses depend on which leagues you've been in over the three years and the amount of secure funding received, the absolute maximum any Premier League team can lose over three years is 105 million. Most teams have until the 30th of June to boost profits for the three-year period ending in 2024. This 16-day window is their last shot. So which teams are in a bind? Let's break down the PSR figures. We have the 22 and 23 results for all teams. Let's combine them to see each team's starting point for this year. We start with operating profit, a key metric we review often on our channel. Next, we add interest and finance costs. Spurs and Man United the largest amounts, Spurs due to financing their new stadium, Manchester United from the Glazer operating model. This brings us to profit, or more commonly loss, before tax. Teams are then allowed to exclude certain costs from the calculation, such as youth and community development, women's football and infrastructure projects. These costs aren't usually disclosed, so we are estimating. Spurs again are expected to have the highest allowable costs due to their new stadium. Factoring those in, and we get to PSR losses specifically the results for years one and two. Again, while the max can vary, no team can lose more than 105 million over three years. In part one, we'll look at the four clubs nearest the limit after years one and two, Chelsea and Newcastle already over the max and Wolves and Manchester United close behind. So let's dive right into it, starting with Chelsea. What's Chelsea's situation and how will it affect their transfer window? With heavy losses in 22 and 23, Chelsea must turn a 36.5 million in profit in 2024 to avoid PSR breaches, a massive 90 million turnaround. Remember, in 2023, they sold two hotels for a 76.5 million profit to help with last year's assessment. This one off sale can't be repeated, making the challenge even tougher. Plus, Chelsea missed out on Champions League revenues in the 23-24 season, unlike the previous year. But on the bright side, Chelsea jumped from 11th to 6th in the Premier League, boosting their merit award. Estimating these, we expect a 40 million dip to Chelsea's bottom line. Chelsea continued heavy investment in transfers, with Mises Casado, Cole Palmer and Christopher Nkunku topping a list that likely exceeds 400 million. Spreading these transfer fees over the players' contracts and adding in their hefty wages could add another 135 million in costs. Now, what about player sales? Here's some relief. Chelsea sold high-value players like Kai Havertz, Mason Mount and Mateo Kovacic. Plus, they released high-wage earners like N'Golo Kante and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Chelsea have also secured a 28 million sale of Lewis Hall to Newcastle. These sales and wage savings could bring Chelsea an additional 190 million. But after factoring in 2024's performance on the pitch and transfer activity off of it, Chelsea still need to bring in over 150 million in revenues or player sales. And it needs to happen before the end of June to meet profit and sustainability rules. It's a shame, it's a shame. This might mean multiple sales, especially homegrown players like Conor Gallagher, Levi Colwell and Reese James, as their fees are pure profit. Now let's shift our focus to Newcastle. With heavier losses in 22 and 23 than the 35 million annual threshold, Newcastle needs to make an 11 million profit in 2024 to stay within limits. So how could they get there? Well, we know Champions League football is lucrative, so let's assume Newcastle made 50 million in their run to the group stage. In the Premier League, Newcastle finished three positions lower, potentially losing up to 10 million. Now let's look at the major signings. Sandro Tonali, Harvey Barnes and Tino Livramento were all signed this year with Lewis Hall to come. Add those together, that's another 35 million of cost. But what about players out? The major departures were Alan Maximan and Chris Wood if the deal was completed in 2024. 
These could bring Newcastle 30 million in profits. Considering all factors, Newcastle may need to find another 35 million before the end of June. Eddie Howe confirmed Bruno Guimaraes has a release clause expiring at the end of June. Could one of Europe's elite swoop in? I don't quite understand. You know, I'm not there doing the figures and the numbers, and I, I, I don't quite understand how it, how it fully works. I'm obviously led by the people above me at the club to say what we can and can't do. Third, Wolverhampton Wanderers. First and foremost, Wolves' fate might already be sealed with their financial year ending on the 31st of May. So if it is sealed, how have they performed? The Wanderers fell to 14th in the league, potentially costing them 1 million. For transfers in, the permanent signings of Mateus Cunha and Boubacar Traore were the biggest additions, adding 15 million in fees and wages. And for players out, this is where Wolves have gained ground. Ruben Neves, Matias Nunes and Nathan Collins, along with Connor Cody, left for substantial fees. Profit and wage savings could add 95 million compared to the previous year. These moves mean Wolves could afford to lose another 33 million and still stay within limits. So at least in terms of June fire sale, Wolves don't appear to be in a rush. Mind boggling. Finally, let's talk about Manchester United. Before Sir Ratcliffe's investment, the Glazers hadn't provided secure funding, limiting Man United to the lower threshold of just 15 million in losses. But if the Ineos owners' contributions meet Premier League's secure funding rules, 2024's threshold rises to 105 million. Despite being in the black last season, Man United's 90 million loss in 22 means they can only afford to lose 18 million this year. So, how did they perform? Despite exiting at the group stage, Man United played Champions League football this season, an upgrade from the Europa League with an estimated £30 million boost. However, United dropped from 3rd to 8th in the league, possibly costing them £10 million. Big signings like Rasmus Hoyland, Mason Mount and Andre Inanna increased transfer fee costs and wages by about £65 million. But leaving Old Trafford, the departures of homegrown talent in Dean Henderson and Anthony Alanga as well as the release of high-wage earners including David De Gea, Phil Jones and Eric Bailey could improve the bottom line by 49 million. These exits mean United could afford another 24 million in losses and still be safe. Uh, we, uh, we had a very complicated season, we had a lot of setbacks and the team had to deal with it every time. So Wolves and Manchester United look safe, but Chelsea and Newcastle have lots of work before the 30th of June. But what about the other clubs? Who else needs to deal quickly? Join us next time to review which other teams might need to hang up the for sale sign.